Okay, let's see. Let me see what I can do. Hello, hello, hello. Am I live? Am I in? Can you hear me? We're in, everybody. Let's see who's in today. Got ATM scaffold in the building. Stack all hi, how you doing? It's busy. Zara, hi, hello. Final touches. Oh, I have final touches. Let's get everybody in. Now, I've got a feeling today may be the first day where my guest actually doesn't show up um, because I tried to call her twice. And because she's a real life friend, she's just maybe cheeky and maybe just decides that she doesn't want to turn up to her own live. She's a rock star. Um, so let's see what is going to happen today. But I'll do the intro anyway and we'll see where we get. So my name is Kaz or Kazzy from Property by Kazzy. And today I'm hosting another episode. It's actually episode 10 of Ask Someone Else. So what that means is we take an industry professional within the property sector and we're going to ask them a load of questions, um, pick their brain and hopefully get some really good answers and some really good value. Um, now, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So in the meantime, obviously, I've got a freestyle until Kelly arrives. Um, so the guest that we're going to have on today, hopefully, fingers crossed, can we get some cross fingers in the chat? So I know that you're praying with me that she actually does turn up. Otherwise, I'm going to be talking to myself for an hour's time. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed she does turn up. Hopefully, we have Kelly today from Upstage. Kelly, um, like I said, I know um, in real life, out of the Instagram world. So I actually knew her originally as a stager, then as a sourcer in the property HMO space as from rent to rent and also deal sourcing. And then she moved into life and insurance, building insurance, different type of insurance products for landlords and property investors. Um, but while she's not here and while I'm still waiting for everybody to arrive, um, or for her to arrive and a couple of other people to come into the building. I'm more than happy to answer some questions and freestyle. So I know I do some ask me anything sometimes. So feel free to pick my brain and we're going to ask Kazi as opposed to ask somebody else. Okay, um, so first question from Abdul Karim. Um, any tips for a 21-year-old? So... I'd definitely say educate yourself within, I'm assuming that means to get into the property space. So look at what you have, what factors you currently can bring to the table. So look at where you are credit wise, capital wise, um, what your learnings like, mindsets like, and try and work on all of those things. Um, the easiest ones to work on are probably your initial information. So make sure you read, make sure you follow the right people, make sure you work out what you don't know so you can fill in those gaps in your knowledge. Um, I am at the moment loving this book. This is more from a development perspective, but this is currently like what I'm having as my go-to guide. So I'll put that out there. would definitely recommend picking that up. Shout out the Wale for um, recommending that to me as I've really enjoyed it. Um, question number two from G. I'm so bad. G phone bond. I feel like that's right. I feel like that's wrong, actually. But G has asked, have I, had, have I ever had any rent to rents? I've actually been doing rent to rent for over a decade. I was doing rent to rent before it was called rent to rent. Um, I just had contacts that were based overseas that had really bad managing agents that were taking advantage of the fact that they weren't here and effectively offered them guaranteed rent from a long time ago. Um, more formally, I was doing rent to rent around. 2015 started a rent to rent company with some partners called sure rents um built that business to 250 rooms plus cash flowing over a million pounds a year um wanted to focus more on developments so i have exited that business now um however i had a really good experience it was great for building cash flow for building my network for gaining experience and it's a low market entry point. So I'd really recommend getting involved in rent to rent if you are looking at a way as initial as initial sort of entry into property investment. Um, why can I not read names? I feel like when you ask a question, you have to write your name phonet phonetically. Is that right? Phonetically. I don't know if that's right. But so I can actually say it because this dyslexia has, has got me in a headlock. Um, so can Anya, 
yeah, I'm going to go with that. Says, what age did I get into property and how did I manage it? So I've answered this question a few times. I mean, I guess if you class the rent to rent stuff, I probably got into property at about 20 years old, um, excluding rent to rent, got into my first developments at about 23. Uh, my background prior to being in property, um, I went to university, dropped out, set up a shisha business, went back to university, finished, um, used the shisha capital to leverage of building that business to invest and buy my first um, flip or investment property. Okay. Michelle K. Yield. Yeed? I feel like I'd need correction on all these names, so come back and correct me properly. Um, has asked, any tips for somebody already on the property ladder to buy another property? Um, well, I guess the, the my first thing would be to look at your current property. Because if you bought your first property as a residential purchase, you'll find obviously that maybe you had a five or 10, 15% deposit. Depending on when you bought that property, the hope is that, that property has increased in value and you have additional equity in that property that you can potentially withdraw to buy a further investment property. Um, and I think that's probably a really good starting point to look at and use that to leverage. Da, 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 da. Um, what's that book called? So sorry, the book is called Property Development, Appraisal and Finance by... Um, David Isaac, John O'Leary, and Mark Daly. I'll put it out one more time. I really like this book. Um, oh, my guy. He's in the building, actually, the one who recommended the book to me. And he's actually been helping me a lot recently. So big up you. You know who you are. Um, is it hard to get into the business with no portfolio? I don't necessarily understand that question um real life k could you re-ask it and i'll see what i can do um a big part of the brr method um seems to be finding a good deal if you purchase a property and do a light refurb e.g e new kitchen new bathroom fresh paint how could you add add um how do you add this much value i think yeah that is a really really good question mo ims Williams, that one's easy. I got that one right. I know it. Me. Um, so, yeah, I think that is really good. Because one thing, so many of these people that pitch BRR, BRR deals, you do have to be able to find something at a price point in which you can add good value for money. Um, now, what I'm, and why I say that is I've, I've, I've said this a lot and I've said this on so many other lives. But when it comes to flips or BRR deals, they make sense when you buy at the right price. Um, there is also always a ceiling price or a cap within a given area. So there's only so much value you can add. So if you're not buying at the right price in the first place, um, it can be difficult to either pull out all or most of your money or make a good margin on a flip, particularly with the transactional costs like stamp duty and your finance costs involved in these flips. Um, I've always been able to find deals and I use a multitude of methods. I use, you know, Zupla and Rightmove agency contacts i use sources i do auction purchases so i think i'd always recommend not pigeon pigeonholing yourself to one angle when it comes to sourcing property um i think it's a myth that you can't find a deal on right move you just need to spend a lot of time and you need to be able to identify a deal so what i mean by that is what has somebody missed if your strategy is maybe converting one bed to two beds um looking at how you could do that within a property because in regards to the question from Mo, um, potentially just, you know, new kitchen, new bathroom and painting isn't going to add the value. But that additional bedroom and that reconfiguration of the space is potentially where the value can come in. Right, this is hard. Fasting, I need a drink because my mouth is getting dry from talking. Kelly, where are you? I'm very disappointed in you. We're going to have words. Um, personal limited structure or partnership for rentals. So I'm assuming you're probably talking from a taxation perspective. And a lot of people will say, oh, because of the changes in the tax laws, which means you can no longer claim your um, the interest element as a tax deductible expense 
from the rental income in your personal name to go limited company. However, that is a very blanket approach. And what I would recommend is reaching out to a qualified accountant who knows your circumstances and they will be able to tell you which you know which structure potentially will be the best for you as it really does come down to circumstance um g for bon from bon from bon um how long has it taken to get you to where i am now i mean the silly not silly answer but the silly answer is that um, i'm 31 years old and it's taken me those 31 years because there's loads of life experience, there's loads of lessons that I wouldn't have got to where I am now without taking those steps to progress, you know, through life and learn different things. Because there's a lot of steps I took before even wanting to get into property that were very much mindset, mentality, um, that allowed me to excel and get to where I am. But in terms of the actual property space and my most recent advance in advancements, advancements maybe right um i would say it's probably taken the better part of seven years um to get to where i am this is a lot of questions it's a lot a lot of questions okay uh next question who is a good broker i'm already in the trade um so if you drop me a dm i'll send you a message of my personal broker um away from now on instagram there is Sam Norris. I use Sam Norris. I've reached out to him. He's actually been part of this segment. He's he's done really well for me and a lot of other people within the property space and the network on Instagram. So I definitely re recommend connecting with him. Um, ooh, I'm going to struggle with this name. H. Annabelle's. H animals. That's what we're going to go for. What are the legal requirements to do rent to rent? Um, so in terms of legal requirements, you need to make sure that your contract with, you know, the landlord is, is a good contract that is actually fit for purpose for what you're doing. You need to make sure the landlords have the relevant consents from their lenders to actually be able to rent to you, as there are some lenders that don't necessarily allow that structure. Um, you need to make sure you have the relevant things in place. So you're conducting your, you know, right to rent um, requirements. You're doing your registering with the correct deposit schemes. All the properties are compliant when that comes to your gas safety, EICRs, your HMO requirements. That's house of multiple occupancy. If you require full planning permission or just a HMO license. I think there are a lot of the um, top level stuff. Apologies, just getting a call coming through. Um, NPAC, 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 yeah, I think I followed you recently, NPAC property, where do I get most of my projects from, direct to vendor auction, um, I'd say, so I've probably done about 50 projects over the last, over the last seven to eight years, um, and it's been a real mix, I'd say direct to vendor has probably been the lowest. I've maybe done about five auctions, probably in the middle, about 30% from auctions. Majority from either they're on the open market or contact with local estate agents. Um, that's where I've sourced a lot of them. And I think one thing I've done I think has helped me is geographically I've really focused in the south of London, which means that I know the areas, I know a deal with, for example, um, I don't know while he shows me a deal tomorrow and he just he just tells me, look, I've got this flat in Peckham that I want to buy, gives me the road name. Within reason, I could tell him whether or not it's a good deal just from the road name and a couple of details about the flat. And I mean, that allows me to appraise a lot more deals because I know the area I'm operating in. So I think focusing on the specific areas really helped me to find good deals and make sure that all my deals are profitable. Uh, one to two birds, there are minimum space standards that need to be considered. Yeah, for new builds, da, da, da. very, 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 very important. Um, Cakes by MK. I'm currently 18 and want to get in real estate. I'm not planning to go to uni. Um, what can I do to pursue real estate? And do I need to go to uni? Um, so no, you don't need to go to uni. I, I studied economics in university, so it didn't actually have anything to do, you know, directly um, with property development. However, I do think 
some academic qualifications do give you a good base for the industry so again as i mentioned when it comes to being able to source and look at deals and see how um profitable a deal is going to be just loads of stuff like even just using spreadsheets and excel and stuff like that it did really help but no you don't need to go um i think there is a plethora it's another good word of information free information as well out there on the internet between clubhouse and instagram youtube linkedin facebook groups so much good information out there at the moment um, that you can go and start to learn about different areas of real estate, start to narrow down what you want to get into. I mean, if you want to get to more in the corporate side of real estate, then yes, you'll need your professional qualifications. So you will need to do some sort of education, whether that's university or a direct qualification. Um, but it really depends on what area of real estate you want to get into. So I think starting to do your own research of what interests you, what you like, is probably a good base there. Um, do I know anybody mentoring? I don't know. I know Tedge has some good e-learning. I know there's mentors like Io, Io Gordon um, does quite a lot of mentorship. I know Daniel Moses does quite a lot of mentorship. If anybody knows anybody else that they recommend, please feel free to put them in the chat box below. Um, Abdul Kareem. How much money is needed to start up um, a first-time rent-to-rent business um, or start a rent-to-rent? So I guess to secure your first property, it really depends, obviously, the area in which you work in. I'm going to speak about London. I'll speak about my experience. The first property I secured, I think, what was the first property? I think it was a three-bedroom three flat with a separate living room, so we were going to use a four. bedroom flat a separate living room we're going to be using as a four bed um now i think the rental was around 1500 we had to furnish the property for approximately 500 pounds a room so that took it to 3500 we managed to negotiate um zero deposit it's not guaranteed that you could do that um and then had a light refurb so some some painting decorating a few bits we tidied up so probably all in 4,500 um, was what we were needed to secure that property. Away from that, we had some contracts, marketing, some other stuff to actually get our first deal across the line. So I think initially we had probably 6,000 um, pounds was my experience, but I'm sure, again, feel free to get involved. Let me know what your experience, if you have got involved in rent to rent in London or anywhere else and how much you paid um, to get your first property. Okay, so Cakes by MK. I would love for works for Savills. Do you know how I could um, get in or do I have any alternative routes? In, in what capacity would you like to work for Savills? Because, I mean, Savills do everything. Savills run auctions. Savills have surveyors. They have um, a rental arm. They have a selling a sales arm so they have a lot of different areas you can get into so i guess it really would depend in which area of savills you want you'd like to specialize in uh what's this let me have a look at this question um do you have any plans outside of uh, outside do you have any plans outside property at the moment um or is property the, the smart horse to back right now? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely. I think it's a really good question. Man's yard. Yep. Um, really good question. I do believe in diversifying. So I, although I do diversify in property, so which means that I have a portfolio that doesn't just include HMOs or single lets. I have, um, yeah, I have commercial, commercial properties, single lets, HMOs. Um, which offers a good mix. Away from that, I'd, I'd have diversified. So I think a few people said, why am I in Dubai so much? I have a luxury packaging company based out in Dubai. So we supply shopping bags for some big um, brands out there, as well as we're starting to supply companies in the UK as well. So that's 45 Inc is the company on Instagram. So if you do need to get in touch, you'll have like a brand that you need some packaging for, feel free to reach out to me over there and we can see how we can help to accommodate your needs. Um, I've also done some stuff in like management and artist management 
in music and other spaces um, and I look into diversifying a couple of other areas that are on my coming soon sort of vision board goal. But yeah, I always think diversification is a good idea. Um, let's see what else there is. Uh, so, uh, Joey Lynch. So I guess this really links into the last question. I don't necessarily have a desire. Like I actually, I'm a proper London boy. Like, I love London. I love everything about the city. Um, I couldn't really see myself living anywhere else. Um, if I was, probably be potentially Dubai or maybe LA, just because I like the Silicon Valley feel, and I feel there is that opportunity also in the property space to make loads of money in both of those places. Um, but, yeah, obviously, because of my business, I'm back and forth between Dubai a lot. But, yeah, now I'm a proper London boy at heart, and I can't see myself going anywhere for the long term. What else? What else? What else? Um, do I charge for mentorship? No, but it's because I don't offer mentorship at the moment. Just reason being is I don't have the time to dedicate to what I think would be the level of service that I would like to offer in the long term. So I try to do things like this where I can you know, talk to a lot of people at once, hopefully answer some questions, hopefully add some value and hopefully give back and say thank you for everyone that's followed me and supported me on my journey. In the long term, of course, I'd love to do mentorship because I'm all about giving back. I'd love to add more value, be able to help other people excel on their journeys. But at the moment, um, it's just not something that I could commit to delivering. I do have one quote unquote like intern who's working very closely with me on different projects, um, but nothing that I would do on a larger scale. Potentially though, I was talking, I did network with the Hill Hub recently. So for those who haven't checked in, we've got a competition currently running um, with the Hill Hub. It's a couple of posts back, um, which means that we're gonna be giving away free office space in the Hill Hub space, as well as I'm gonna be doing like either a day with somebody. So it's if you want deal analysis, if you want mentorship, but one-on-one, -on -one, I'll spend the whole day with somebody. So to enter that, you just gotta go in. I think you gotta like that post. You've got a comment like on it and tag three friends and follow myself in the Hill Hub. So if you haven't done that already, make sure you do that because that'll be an opportunity to do some internship, internship, mentorship. But the reason I mentioned that is also because um, I did speak to them about potentially they've got this really amazing boardroom that they use for training. So they were going to give me the opportunity to maybe run a couple of sessions there where I can invite some people down. And whether you want to do deal analysis, whether you just want to pick my brain or do kind of this, but on a more, not one-to-one, -one, but mini group session as lockdown eases, I think that'll be really good. What do you think about the idea of doing that? Would, would people be up for that? Again, because I can't offer the mentorship, but hopefully that'll be a good way to add value. Alfred, Alfred, Alfred. By the way, if you're not already following my guy, Alfred Daisy, make sure you're following him. He's got a live right after this, so I'm going to clock off, bang on time to make sure I can go and watch that. Alfred Daisy, actually, just go and tag yourself in the, comment, in the question section so people can find you directly. But he's got a live with the amazing, amazing? Why can't I talk? It's because I've got to talk nonstop because Kelly let me down. Go and find Kelly upstage and say, where are you? <laughs> where are you right now? You're making Kaz have a dry mouth. Um, but yeah, go and follow Alfred um, Daisy. He's got a live with Ted Talks talking about how they raised um, investor capital, how they went about it, what their processes are, which I think is amazing. Um, I haven't raised much investor capital recently, but I'm going to be doing that in the future. So I'm definitely going to be clocked in. So I hope everybody else is. All right, I'm going to go back through some of the questions because you've got many. Do this. Da, 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 da. Um, he's a good broker. I answered that. Director vendor, one to two. How much money to start? Uh, work for servos. Let's just see. Okay. Here's Mr. LRC. Purchasing a first buy to let property. From experience, do you think Victorian old builds are more profitable than new builds in the long term if the plan is to sell after five to ten years? Oof. Um, okay, so again, this isn't from like any direct, you know, I can't say I'm right on this. This is just my personal opinion. But I love a period, you know, Victorian, Edwardian, Georgian property. Um reason being is potentially sometimes particularly with new builds 
they look bright and shiny and you know amazing at the beginning and you pay a premium for that because they've never been lived in just like buying a brand new car now they don't depreciate off the lot in the same way a car does but they don't necessarily retain that feel um, I've had the same experience in the rent to rent industry where when a new room is brand new, we actually get a premium that maybe we can't retain for the duration of the contract, even if rents are slowly creeping up. I think the same can be said for new builds, particularly um, depending on what the communals are like, what the freeholders are like, how well they actually manage the building. Um, you can see that some of them don't hold their value as well. So I think if you can find a nice Victorian property, the capital appreciation can be better downside of that to play devil's advocate is these much older buildings are a lot more likely to have maybe more issues when it comes to your refurb there's been so many instances where i've you know i've taken off wallpaper thinking yeah we're just gonna take off the wallpaper quick tidy up take off the wallpaper and half the wall falls down realize it's got woodworm the the studs are rotten you know the joists are bad so it's a bit of you know give or take but i personally prefer victorian properties in the long term um uh, I'm on Clubhouse. Who can I follow that will help? So follow the Property Club hosted by Sharina. Uh, we've had her on here. So if you go back through some of the old posts, you'll see her. She runs that. They run loads of really, really good rooms. Um, that you'll pick up loads of good information and network with loads of really, really good people that are doing really big things. Um, yeah, nah, see, listen. Adewale is he's telling people, go to uni and study real estate. I really think that is that is, is great. Like, I didn't, but a lot of the time, sometimes when I'm having conversations, I wish I did. So it's a bit of give or take. Um, but I think potentially it's on my goal in the next um, sort of next couple of years to do my master's in property development, just so I've got that as a background for when I want to go on to bigger and better projects. Um, yeah, Videm Properties is another good one as well, actually, to have a look at. They do a lot of mentorship um, over there. Um, see, this is the, the full stops have confused me. Tech here. Um, I have £50,000 and want to invest in property. Um, what advice would you give in regards to location and flipping properties with that amount? So I think, do you know what I'd advise you do? I'm not even going to answer this. I'm going to go and advise that you watch last week's live with Luke's properties, as that's really what we touched on, the opportunity of looking at other areas outside of London. Um, da -da -da -da. Not sure if you said you was. If you did, how has having dyslexia been with your property journey? Um, I mean, I don't have to write that much, but I do, like, you know, I did used to potentially think sometimes I'd have to spend a lot longer than you know everybody else in terms of um you know when I'm crafting emails or trying to write offer letters or just do certain things so I've used some good software I use a software called Grammarly Pro I think it cost me about 89 pounds for the year um and that allows me to just have you know it's basically like a built-in spell checker but way better than the ones on the iphone or on your laptops it does your punctuation kind of realizes when you've jumbled up words and things like that so that's helped me to um you know in, in the way i come across i think also just trying to do stuff that's uncomfortable like i read a lot because i've, I've identified that it's not one of my strengths so i read a lot not just you know academically but read for fun to just try and improve that because i don't want to just say okay you know, I'm dyslexic, so it's a weakness. Let me just leave it as a weakness. Let me try and improve upon that. Um, yeah, there's another Kaz, another Kazim, same name name as me. Um, he does he does some uh, mentorship as well that he's just started. So yeah, you can reach out to him as well. I'm just going through da -da 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 -da, several as many selling for a piece of state. It's be all right. Da -da -da -da. Um, so yeah, I mean, if sorry, cakes by MK, if you want to get into the estate agency field, then I don't think there's a lot stopping you. If you're confident, if you can sell, if you can talk, if you already have a passion for real estate, it's a really good area for you to get into. Savills are quite, you know, they're, they're, they're more upper echelon in the estate agency world. So potentially may start starting, you know, as a, as a Saturday job or as a part-time person or even a full-time job with an independent or a smaller agency to build your experience base. But from there, there's no reason you can't look to target to get into Savills as soon as possible. Um, 
ITTX, you are so inspirational. Thank you, my brother or sister, I don't know, but thank you very much for your kind words. Um, I think I answered the question already. I think you must have missed it, Wizkiddo, in regards to Rent to Rent. Um, are there any agencies specific? Ooh, are there any agencies specifically specialising? That's a tongue twister in rent to rent in Southeast London. Um, so I mean, there's loads of companies that offer rent to rent. If you're talking about companies that will allow you to rent from them to do rent to rent, I wouldn't say specifically, but you can obviously have conversations with you know individual agents that you know the the private the independent agents you can have contract conversations with larger agents but they're a lot easier to have with the independents because you're talking to the deal you know you're talking to the decision maker as opposed to talking to maybe somebody who doesn't have that final decision to make on whether or not they'll allow rent to rent or um you know corporate contracts um, but as you grow, you'll be able to say, do you know, what? on a top level, I want to talk to the director. I want to say, look, we're happy to take on 10, 15, 20 properties, but these are our terms and conditions. And you can, you know, kind of bespoke and tweet them based on the individual agents you're dealing with. Um, Adewale has said, sign me up for the Hill Hub boardroom. Don't worry, you come. Yeah, um, I will. as soon as I put it out there, it'll probably be once lockdown is eased properly and once I get back from Dubai, so probably towards the latter part of June. Um, and yes, maybe mid, mid, mid to end of June and we'll get some conversations flowing in regards to doing a boardroom stuff. Just I'll take you through some deals that I've done. You can pick my brain and ask questions. Hopefully you come with some deals. There might even be a deal that you can't do and I can get on board with. Um, I think I'll take this opportunity just to step away from some questions and just kind of actually, because some people, obviously I do a lot of stuff on here and I talk about you know, trying to uplift the community and helping people get into property. I talk about buying property. I talk about doing refurbs for other people. So I think I just take this opportunity to explain what it is that I do. So hi, I'm Kaz or Kazi from Property by Kazi. And I do house stuff. So what that means is I buy and sell properties with the, with the aim to add value. I also take investment from people that have money, you know, sitting in the bank that's offering them a really low rate of return. And I use that to do even more deals. I do some JVs with people. Again, that's very specific. I don't do loads, but if you have an amazing deal, I do some assisted sales stuff. So that means potentially if you've got an asset that you are looking to either sell or add value to, but don't have the capability to capability to deliver that. I can, we can, you know, have a contract to agreement where you bring the property, I bring the expertise and the money to develop that property, and we both get an increased return on what we've invested in the property. Um, I also offer my build team out on, you know, for brand new kitchens, bathrooms, or full refurbs, um, new builds, you know, so if you're looking for something like that, again, we're really busy at the moment, so it might not be, be able to do it ASAP, but I did mention that we've got a couple of weeks, end of May slash beginning of June, where we could squeeze in some brand new kitchens and bathrooms, got loads of examples on the page, so if you are interested, go and have a look. Um, let me have a look through the questions. Da -da 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 -da. Um, I said this so well earlier. NPAC property. What is the one thing you would say people don't mention enough in the property industry that has been a setback, let's say? Per personally, touch words, I've not had that many setbacks. Um, I think, honestly, I'm, I'm quite risk adverse. So... By that, I mean, I don't really love risks. I like to try and mitigate my risks as much as possible. Um, so I've potentially moved slower than some of my counterparts within the industry. Um, and they've gone on to do bigger and better things. And I think, but I think in terms of things that people potentially don't mention enough, um, I think just that it's not passive. Like property can be passive, but from a real top level, if you want to be great at something, you have to have a good level of involvement. Whether you're doing rent to rent, whether you're doing flips, BRRR, um, HMOs, it's not a passive income. You're not just going to sit there 
and make money overnight. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're saying what you want is anywhere from a 5 to 10% return on your money, that can be passive because you can give someone like myself or loads of other people that do great stuff in the property space your money, and we will work that for you and guarantee you your return. However, if you want to be doing the deals yourself, you want to be setting up your own property business, it's not passive. You're going to have to do the groundwork. And I think that's maybe one thing that when I see these YouTube videos, because obviously all I do is watch property stuff pop up that say how to make money with no money, how to make money in property without doing anything. And I just think like you're just selling people dreams and telling them rubbish. Um, Wendy, is it worth expanding um, the group floor to create bedrooms? Um, does this actually increase the value? I, I don't know what you mean by oh, ground floor. Um, it depends on your area. So in London, where I operate, an extra bedroom does add considerable value. However, it, a lot of the time when you're spending money on an extension, an extension that, you know, starting price is 25,000, depending on the size and the complexity, could all, all the way up to 70,000, it really depends on what your return on investment is going to be. So if you've got a property that's currently worth 300,000 and you spend 30,000 pounds on an extension, and that extension means that the property is now worth 360,000, you've made two pounds for every pound that you spent. So it's great value for money. So I think it really comes down to you doing your numbers, looking at your comparables. A lot of the time within a quarter of a mile, there'll be great examples of people that have done an extension. And you can see on Rightmove, if you're lucky enough to have access to that at Rightmove Plus, see what things have sold for. And um, yeah, you can get a good idea of whether it's going to offer value for money. But that's it. There's not like a one-stop answer for that. It really does depend on your individual property. Um, infinity, pro infinity Properties. I've been trying to network and learn more in property development and trying to gain experience, but nobody seems to offer opportunities. Any advice to get experience with developers? I mean, yeah. So I, I was lucky. I managed to be annoying and get direct experience with a developer on starting out. Um, you know, I think, in this space, like the social media space, there's not as many opportunities to work maybe hands-on with a developer, but there's so many people that are documenting their journeys. That, like, For me, I'm very transparent. I'm about to put out a video next week in regards to the Rose Bank. I'm gonna tell you what I bought it for, what I sold it for, how much I spent, what my stamp duty costs, how I managed to pay zero stamp duty, all of these things. And there's a lot of information out there. So you don't necessarily have to be boots on the ground and learning with somebody to learn. Um, but yeah, just annoy someone, someone else though, not me. Go and annoy someone. Maybe annoy Alfred. Since I've just plugged in, maybe you can go and annoy Alfred. Um, yeah, house stuff. I do house stuff. Um, would you fund for, uh, what's that, sorry? Kareem, I didn't understand your question. Uh, would I fund both for the JV or just the individual? Can you re-ask that? Ooh. Um, let's see, yeah, Alfred just answered my same question earlier. Cakes by MK, you've answered a lot of questions. See, this is this is like free mentorship. Um, I've always been told that I'm very good at selling, especially in my current field. Um, da -da 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 -da. do I hire young applicants? I don't actually. So, for what you said in terms of getting into Savills, I don't have a sales team. That's not what. That's not what I do. Um, in my previous role, like, so my previous company at rent to rent we did have a sales team. So in that space, we did take people on that were good, um, you know, and it was their job to grow the business and take on new deals. But I think, yeah, if you're good at sales, I was good at sales. My first job was phones for you. Yep, I can still do it. I learned that at training um, and I love sales. So I actually always missed that I didn't actually work in real estate because I think I would have smashed it. Clary, uh, such good content. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Um, uh, Abdi Karim, what's uh, my experience on experience? Oh, no, experience. I just say words. I'm very dyslexic. What is my opinion on, on, what is my opinion on commercial to residential PD in London? It's great. It's great, like, you're, not that you're slightly late, but it has been saturated a little bit. But so those opportunities that, you know, people didn't really know there were opportunities. Now people are selling them at a premium on the basis that, look, even if I'm not going to do this, I know that it's worth a lot more. 
So if you want to do it, you're going to pay me a premium. However, it's great. I'm doing one at the moment. Um, got planning under PD for, you know, converting the upper part of our office to a single residential two bedroom dwelling. Great part about this is the ground floor is still going to rent for just as much as it was renting for before the commercial premise. And we've now got a brand new two bedroom flat worth in excess of £300,000 that realistically hasn't really devalued the rent roll of the building. So they're amazing. I'm looking at a few more. I'm looking at some loft space deals as well to add further value to the um, PD conversions. But yeah, I think they're really good. And particularly with um, COVID, and with a lot of people realizing that, you know what, we don't need these offices. We can work from home. We worked from home for the last 18 months. We're potentially wasting money. I think there's going to be a lot more office space coming available. Um, so potentially a lot more potential for more deals in that PD space. Oh, I should check my question box. My bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm checking my question box now. Who said that so I can go and answer their question? Miller. Da, 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 da. Let me see. This is your question, Will. I've checked the box. What's the chance of being able to shadow you? I, um, um, I believe in bringing something to the table. So, I, um, yeah, I believe in a value proposition. So, always bringing something to the table. And I think that's, I think that's very important. I don't necessarily, like I said, offer shadowing at the moment, but enter the competition with the Hill Hub. And if that's what you want to do for that day, then come over and shadow me. Um, if you win, you can do that. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, da -da -da -da. Let me go through just the questions I can answer quickly because I'm going to go before seven because I'm going to watch Alfred. And make sure you are too. When did I get started? I got started where in... So we're in 2021, 2013, 14, so seven, eight years ago. Um, and I've not looked back. I love it. I love property. It's my thing. Da, 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 da. Have I done any BRRR? So yes, I have. Um, I've done like a block of flats. Um, that I have retained, or not block, sorry, I've done a the conversion to flats that I've retained. Um, I only retain them because you've got over 100 and sort of, I think it's 112% of the money out. It's got all the money out um, and we're able to keep the properties. However, generally speaking, I don't love BRRR. I've spoken about this in the past. When I'm building my rental portfolio, I try and specifically find stuff that's going to offer me a really good yield. And a lot of the time, it's difficult to marry, you know, what's a good deal, what's going to add value versus what's going to yield well. So I'll sometimes, or I'll generally speaking, I'll do a flip, maybe take a portion of the profit and look to buy an asset to increase my cash flow and um, to find a balance between a retained, um, sorry, BRRR. The question um, is uh, basically is where you buy a property, you refurbish it, um, you refinance it, and then you rent it. So I'm just using acronyms. Um, but yeah, so generally speaking, I don't love it, but it is something I've done in the past. I would only do it if I get 100% of my money out because at the moment, now that I think I've built up my experience, my goal is to just do bigger, better, more fancy, more amazing projects because I actually really like property. So I'd love to do projects that look really nice. Um, my goal is to do a development of maybe like nine houses, build a little street, and build nine like you know bespoke really nice houses i think there's a great market for that at the moment because a lot of people are looking at you know one in the outside space one in a built-in office built-in gym and i'd love to design those so that's kind of my goal so i'm looking at sites like that so if you have anything like that you know give me a shout i'd love to work with that I'd love to work with somebody on something like that ah mr meeks how did i become a goat just born a goat I don't know. It's just happened. Um, ah, quite even got that question. Now I'm just stuck. Um, da, 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 da. Let me have a look. Okay, who was shout? Someone was shouting at me, saying I ignored their question. I'm gonna go soon, so let me go back in to it. Um, 
Oh, so I didn't realize you were in Infinity Properties. Hi, Bilal. How are you doing, man? You're always here. Much appreciated for showing up every week. I see you. I see the people that are here every week as well. Don't think I miss you. I appreciate it. Um, Kaz, with regards to lending your build team, would I consider a job uh, full refurb in the southeast? Um, oh, I thought you meant southeast London. Southeast is in Southampton. Unfortunately, not only operative in the M25. Duh, 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 duh. What would you say is the average cost per room for a HMO renovation? If you're just looking, again, renovation is a difficult word. Let's say we're not doing any plumbing, electrics, the flooring's fine. You know, it's just furnishing, dressing, tidying up. I budgeted 500 pounds a room. And that was kind of my go-to metric that I would use. I'm going to try and rush through some of these questions. Duh, 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 duh. What? SBZ 24s what is the best tip you would give to somebody who is a beginner in real estate learn as much as you can like don't ignore the learning because it's great to start doing and don't get me wrong you'll start doing and you'll do amazing things but don't forego the learning because some of the mistakes you can make if you don't have that information can be very costly and can, can put you off from developing and growing like you know within the space what did I study at university I studied economics as a numbers man, because obviously I can't spell, so I had to shy away from that and and do and do some numbers. Um, if you transfer your properties to your kid's name and live for seven years, there's no tax involved. Correct. Um, can't remember what I don't know what that is. I think Alfred was asking somebody else's question. What's your question? I said, will I help you in a joint venture contract? Will I help you prepare the contract or will I do a joint venture with you? What, what, what question are you asking there? I answered, what's BRRR? What was the first deal when you started? Okay, so Stella, my first deal. My first deal, I bought um, a property. It was called a baptism of fire in property because my first deal ever was I used a bridging loan. I didn't use a residential mortgage. I wasn't able to get one because I had bad-ish credit or not perf imperfect credit. Um, didn't have great income at the time, but really just wanted to get going because I built the capital from my shisha business. It was a flip in Sydney. It was a one-bedroom flat, had a really big kitchen. I converted to a two-bedroom flat um purchased it for I, I don't know the numbers and i'm gonna spend ages getting into my laptop but i just remember that we made net about forty-two thousand pounds um purchased it at auction from a housing association so i knew it wasn't you know there wasn't too much sort of dodgy stuff that could have gone on it was pretty safe um needed a full refurb actually ended up refurbing the corridor the communal area at my cost just to make sure that um we got a good buyer. My mistake I made on that one was I was, you know what I mean? I was new. I was very green. I wanted to make everything really fancy. And I put um, a TV in the bathroom behind like a mirror um, in the bath. It wasn't the area for that. It didn't work. I actually had a buyer who was so annoyed that I'd wasted money on it. They said they're not offering just on the basis that I'd done that. But um, yeah, that was a little lesson learned. But that was my first deal. And I'm just carried on doing a lot of similar stuff since then. Um, Joe Lynch, thank you for taking the time out of my busy schedule to do this every week. Greatly appreciate the information. Um, I missed, I think I've answered your question, but I'll go back to it if I've missed it. But thank you anyway, you're more than welcome. Thank you for following. Um, da -da 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 -da. um NQ, um, Eagler Jr., I feel like I've got that right. Uh, said what books teach you the most on real estate off the top of my head I couldn't tell you again like I said I love this book but it's a bit more in depth and um, from a starting point if you go onto my profile and go back about 10 posts I've recommended five of my favorite books um, in the property development space so I'd recommend buying all of those on Amazon or downloading them they're definitely worth it uh, good question you don't find it very funny that I'm a goat I'm definitely a goat did I not say M25? What motorway did I say? I work within the M25. I'm not sure why that's funny, but that's where I operate. Um, da, 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 da. Serviced accommodation are the best yields. 
It's a bit of a loaded answer um, in terms of yield. Like, yes, service accommodation can offer you really high rates of return on the property. However, obviously, there's a lot more work involved. Um, so depending on, for me, when, when, when I was looking at service accommodation, I tried it and I didn't love it because unless you have like a delivery partner, like I had a really good cleaning company who were doing all my check-ins and inspections and property management, but without them, I obviously have to calculate my time into my yields. And if I calculate what I charge per hour and the amount of work I was putting in or how much I have to pay somebody to manage my service accommodation, the yields weren't as amazing as they could be. And you've also got to take into account voids, the effects like, you know, a pandemic or other issues have on um, your returns. But from a high level, yes, they offer you a better rate of return than HMOs or single lets, but there are other things to consider. Savvy Balligan, my favorite person in the world. Love to have you here. Um, you forgot capital gains. Da, 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 da. Okay, thank you. But yeah, reach out again. My other thing is always go to the experts. Obviously, I'll answer as many questions as possible. But um, from a tax perspective, go to an accountant and speak to those. Um, Kazi, will you say it's better to flip estates and sell them or rent them? Um, that really has to do with your personal preference. Like, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve an income? Are you trying to increase your working capital to do bigger projects? Are you trying to spend your working capital on buying nice trainers or nice clothes? Like, it really depends what your target is um, and what you're trying to do. Personally, I like to find a balance of both, but find properties that I can buy and add a lot of value to increase my um, working capital pot to do bigger deals um, and also keep a portfolio to rent to obviously maintain my um, relatively passive income. Let me go back to the questions. This is a load in there. I'm actually going to run out. Um, but I may. I think this has been really interactive. Everyone's been quite involved. So I may. I think I've got another gap coming up. I may actually just do, do my own live once I'm, when I'm not fasting um, and I can drink water or drink loads of tea like Luke was last week. Da, 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 which question? Okay, let me pick this up now. Um, I have a basement space that's not been converted yet. What do I recommend you do with that? So that's interesting. Um, that was Kelly just phoning me, by the way, at um, 6.52. So we'll speak to her afterwards. Um, but yeah, space. See, it's that basement space. Um, it really depends. Maybe ping me over a picture of it. Let me know the floor plans. Let me know what type of building it's part of. Um, if you're planning, if you're planning to just get extra rooms down there, potentially not because basements to go down is way more expensive than going up. Um, so I would advise that you look at what value you're going to add by doing it. Funny enough, I've just had an um, uh, option agreement accepted on a basement space where the guys over at AA Drafting are going to get us hopefully planning for a brand new two bedroom flat. So for that one, for example, it doesn't matter that the works are going to cost in excess of 150,000 because the hope is that the two bedroom flat is going to sell for an excess of 450,000. So minus what I would have paid for the, the land itself, it still makes sense. So I think it really just depends on what you currently have there, what you plan to do with it and are you going to add value? Hope that helps. Ah, there's so many questions and I'm finishing in two minutes. Uh, what do I study at university? I've answered that. Um, da, 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 there was a question on, I'm just going to go through the chat. Um, are there any questions in the chat that you guys think I should answer? Let me have a look. Thoughts about 75% um, bridging plus financing uh, renovation structure. Uh, Thoughts about 75% vision, bridging plus renovation cost structures. Mm, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to ignore that one for now. Sorry. Um, oh, Tej, 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 Tej. I hope you're preparing your selfie light for your um, interview of Alfred so you can tell the people how they can earn, um, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, da, 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 da. let me have a look any other questions I can answer quickly no I think I think I think I'm done Kelly Kelly you had the cheek 
to join at this time. You're crazy, Kelly. You are the craziest, craziest person I know. You beat Tex Jones' world record as being 12 minutes late to arrive 54 minutes late to your one-hour chat. You're mad. I'm going to phone you shortly after this. Um, okay. Anyway, this has been Ask Someone Else where you've asked me instead. You've got me working, Kelly. No, I'm not listening. I can see you typing. Just stop typing. Just phone me after this. Um, yeah, so this has been Kaz or Kazi from Property by Kazi giving you an opportunity to ask an industry expert, which unfortunately has been myself today, all the questions you want to know in the property space. If you're not already, make sure you're following me next week. I want to say it's either one of two people. We've either got Karina Laporte, the winner of The Apprentice, or we've got the property lawyer answering all your questions in this property space. It's going to be one of the two. Either way, it's going to be a really good episode. Make sure you're following. Make sure you've also signed up to that Hill Hub competition for the opportunity to win mentorship and a free office space. Um, and also potentially, I'm not wearing them today. Sorry, it's my first day not wearing merch, but they're all in the wash. Property by Kazi Hoodies. Kelly, do you think you could come next week? You're bluffing. I'm booked up until June. <laughs> But um, no, I'm joking. We'll catch up soon, 100%. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.